As debate over the economic stimulus package gripped Washington this week, the elephant in the room was the U.S.'s trillion-dollar military budget. Democratic Congressman Barney Frank was a lone voice in the mainstream media calling for cuts to that budget. In recent weeks, Frank has taken his message directly to This Week on ABC, as well as NBC's Meet the Press, where he said the following. Because some of the arguments you've been hearing now about how government spending never helps the economy, you're going to hear the absolute reverse when military spending comes up. We have an airplane, the F-22, that is uh, designed to defeat the Soviet Union in a war. And uh, I think we could save billions. Well, the defense budget has gone way up under George Bush. And somehow, to my Republican friends, uh, enormous amounts for the war in Iraq, which I thought was a mistake, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars for weapons to fight the Cold War. They don't count those. But you're going to hear an argument about how important military spending is for the economy. When Frank published an op-ed three days later, the exact argument appeared in a Google Context ad alongside his article in The Nation. The ad links to a petition pressuring Congress to release more government funds to build more F-22 Raptors, the same plane that Frank and others have pointed to as an example of wasteful military spending. The focus of the campaign is on the Raptor's importance as a job provider. The ads and accompanying petition are being run anonymously and appear alongside most articles that deal with the topic of military spending. One voice that has been leading the charge for increased defense spending is the ostensibly fiscally conservative Harvard economist Martin Feldstein. Former chief economic advisor to President Reagan, Bloomberg TV spoke to Feldstein as he entered a meeting with leading House Democrats. Or the uh, ability to use increased defense spending as a way of creating jobs. Defense spending, uh, tell me exactly why you think that's going to be good fuel for this economy right now. Uh, and do you think Democrats have an appetite for that? Well, we'll find out the answer to whether they have an appetite, but I think the defense programs can increase very quickly. They can hire people, they can put out orders, uh, they can move much more quickly than, say, infrastructure spending. We asked military expert Miriam Pemberton whether or not military spending is helpful in stimulating the economy. A group of economists at the University of Massachusetts did a study uh, two years ago looking at what, how many jobs could be created from a billion dollars of military spending versus the same amount spent on health care, mass transit, home weatherization and education, and personal consumption, that is tax cuts. And uh, what they found was that, that uh, military spending is nearly the worst job creator among all those categories. The only thing that was worse was cutting taxes for personal consumption. So uh, home weatherization, mass transit, uh, education, health care, all of those would create more jobs than uh, would be created by an equivalent amount of, mil of military spending. Former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan provided a similar conclusion in testimony before the House in 1999. Then, as now, it was Barney Frank asking the questions. Frank asked, military products, as you previously said here, to the extent you could put those same dollars into other areas, maybe education and job training, maybe into transportation, you are dollar for dollar likely to have a better economic effect. Is that an accurate reference to what you are saying here? Greenspan responded, yes it is, Mr. Frank. Frank continued further, to the extent you can reduce military spending consistent with your security needs, that is going to have a good economic effect? Greenspan, yes. While it remains to be seen if the military industry will be able to capitalize on government's attempts to stimulate the U.S. economy, one effect that the crisis is already having on the military is providing a surge in recruitment. All four branches reported that they had met or exceeded their recruitment targets for the month of January, a task that has been exceedingly difficult over recent years. The president has talked about uh, in expanding the size of the armed forces by 100,000. And in an economic downturn, uh, I would say the economics works in favor of uh, fulfilling that goal because as people lose jobs, the military becomes the employer of last resort. President Obama's ambitious recruitment target is made even more achievable with favorable media coverage like this local 6 o'clock news report from CBS affiliate WNCT in North Carolina. With the economy, though, they could face an uphill battle to find jobs. But as our Philip Jones explains, some local high school students got an up-close look today at one employer that's always hiring. 
the military. But these students are getting more than just a behind the scenes look at what goes on here at Cherry Point on a daily basis. With an economy that's in turmoil and so few businesses in the private sector hiring, they're getting an up close glimpse at a career field that could offer them some serious job security. I think first of all that many young people are looking into the stability and security in these turbulent times. But Cherry Point community planner Vanessa Lawrence says a career in the military offers unparalleled job security and job satisfaction. She would know. She joined the Navy and served in the Gulf War after she attended National Groundhog Job Shadow Day when she was in high school. Donate today and receive a new documentary film available to members of the Real News Network. The History of the National Security State with legendary author Gore Vidal. Bonus features of the DVD include an in-depth response to Vidal from ex-CIA analyst Ray McGovern, who served under seven U.S. presidents, an exclusive interview with Colin Powell's former chief of staff Larry Wilkerson, and an insightful interview with oil policy analyst Antonia Juhas. The news magazine of the screen. Living glimpses of history in the making. Hollywood and Washington is a symbiotic relationship. They both deal with illusions. Reality doesn't often uh, play much of a part. I think I saw through the myth of the uh, Cold War almost from the beginning. I was a Washington political kid from a political family. Roosevelt first had radio because he had a this great speaking voice and everyone liked to hear. Truman proceeded to break every arrangement that Roosevelt had set up for a peaceful coexistence. And Truman thought that it would be a good idea. Why not just stay armed all the time? And then he devised the national security state. You've got to go up and swear allegiance to the United States or else you're a commie. I mean, we, were, we had imported fascism. We get Dwight Eisenhower who said that we have this great military industrial complex. It is a dangerous thing. And he said this is going to change everything. And the way our country's governed is going to change us politically. Along comes Jack Kennedy, who wanted to make his mark, believed in the Cold War. But he said in this kind of politics, it is the appearance of things that matter. I think everybody should take a sober look at the world about us. The national security state still exists, only it isn't communism anymore, it's terrorism. This is the most serious thing that has happened in the history of the United States. Knowledge is power. We need an honest news system. We need the real news. This is the sort of thing we can build right now without anyone else's permission from the government or from the business community. It's the powers in our hands. If we're not gonna sleepwalk into more wars, we think we need to start with a television news network that won't bow to pressure and has the courage to seek facts. And that means independent economics. And that's why we need you. Make a tax-deductible donation now of at least $10 a month or a one-time give of at least $75. As a thank you for your support, we will send you the new documentary film, The History of the National Security State.